Today on the show, I'm happy to have Mark Banoob. He's the founder of LeeRise. They're an AI talent marketplace. And you have quite an interesting founding story to share with us today. Yeah, Chad, thanks for having me. So let me tell you about how LeeRise was founded. I was an AI engineer. I was looking for an advanced AI job in the Middle East, but it was very difficult to find. I realized quickly that the market wasn't mature enough. There weren't enough opportunities. And to be honest, that was very depressing. It was very tough. Uh, I was quite despair. I was like, I'm looking for that dream job in AI, but couldn't find. And suddenly things took a turn. Things changed. I got very lucky and got invited to the first MIT Deep Technology Bootcamp in Boston, in the US. So when I traveled there, I realized a massive number and quickly, I found out that there were over 5 million unfulfilled AI jobs in North America and Europe, which quickly turned this light bulb in my head because I was like, okay, there's massive supply of talent in the Middle East and Africa in the hundreds of thousands. One of them was myself. I embodied that supply, struggling to find that, that these jobs. And at the same time, there are these advanced countries that are struggling to find the talent. And there is these 5 million jobs that aren't, aren't finding their suitable match. So I quickly thought, okay, I got excited. I'm like, let me just find a way to connect both and to bridge that gap. I then uh, met luckily the founder of a Silicon Valley based startup called uh, Neotax. And what they were doing, they were looking to hire their first AI team, but it was really expensive, cost over $150,000. And over two months to make one junior hire in, in the Bay Area. And that's where the founder were coming, was coming to the region to make a hire. They were struggling a bit because it wasn't easy to find the right talent. However, because we had launched the first bootcamp with Microsoft, we had a very strong network. So in less than a week, I was able to build him one of the top AI expert teams in NLP in the region at in just one week. So one third of the time at one third of the cost was very successful. They built a successful POC that led them to raise a successful seed round. And then we just replicated that model across 15 different customers, across 10 different countries in Canada, US, Europe. And we got featured by Forbes. We got backed by the Google Accelerator. 3,000 talents joined our platform. And we got recently backed by Techstars, powered by JP Morgan. So it's been a very exciting journey and we turned failure, find that dream job in AI to a platform that solves this for many others and solve that also for businesses to fulfill our vision. We want to augment intelligence by unlocking AI for every business. Is this the first startup you founded? Yes. However, I tried starting up dozens of ideas, companies, and they all failed. They didn't see the light of, of days. Yeah, it's the first real business that I take heads on seriously. Yeah, it's been quite a journey. So now that you've gotten this, it's nice to get the traction early like this, first of all. And we both know it doesn't happen. It doesn't always happen that way. So now that you have that baseline, are you ready to like really scale this thing out now? 100%. Right now, we figured exactly how the market works and how it's driven. We understand that the AI expert network is key because companies want to work with people who are experts in the specific use case. Uh, so for example, you do podcasting, you're, you, you do a lot of channels, marketing, sales. So you're looking like at specific, you want a specific use case in that area where someone has already built that using AI. So. Once that we match that expert with someone like you or in any business in healthcare, e-commerce, add that specific use case, that act, this is where, what the company really needs. Someone who's done it before and the expert is really excited about this use case and, and company mission. We match both together and, and both really do great work together when match the right expertise in AI with the right use case and mission and company. So Mark, if you could tell your younger self any one thing, what would it be? Okay. I would tell my younger self, number one, follow your passion, create massive value around what you love doing. 
So basically go really deep, share your experiences, share what you learn about what you really love and are passionate about. Number two is surround yourself with this real solid founding team. This is really key and you need to first make bad hires. You need to first understand very well what you're looking for. The best way to make really good hires is have an expert that has extensive experience in that field and domain come into the interviewing process and really validate your decision uh, in, in why this is a key uh, strategic hire. Yeah, and number three is build code as fast as possible and validate and talk to users and make sure that you're always adding value to users using a product, using your product. In that you are within the talent part of AI, are you seeing, how is the demand supply comparison right now? Yeah, there is a gap between the demand supply. So there's more demand than there is supply, which happens normally in deep technology markets because the company's adoption of technology, like data, like computing, goes faster than the education system. So there's a gap and delay. But not only that, there's also a mismatch between the geographies of talent. So with advanced countries like the United States, Canada, West Europe, will have way even larger gap because they're moving at faster pace than, for example, continents like Africa, which have a very large supply of, of talents. They have 30% of their population is under the age of 30. You're talking about 1 billion people. And a lot of them are going into the ICT sector. So there's a lot of talent, yet not a lot of jobs in that region. So that's also something in the specific field of AI that we're solving, where we're connecting, bridging this gap in marketplace uh, mismatch between demand and supply. So is this driving up the price? On the contrary. So the price, yeah. It, so it driving up the price in the, in the United States, for example, because there's more demand than there is supply. So to, to actually cater for the supply to attract talents, you want to rate, rise up the price or the, the salaries. And you'll see that even more difficult because the top top companies like Microsoft, Google, OpenAI will really drive that price up. So they get the top tier talents and they leave very few for the market. However, we there is also pricing because the same quality of a machine learning engineer, for example, in a country, in an emerging market, especially like Egypt, Nigeria, and Africa would, would actually cost, would actually get paid one third of what that, that same engineer would get paid in the United States. So there's a really big gap here for companies to leverage and companies in the U.S. do not find the talent in the U.S. and it's really expensive. So instead of them spending all that time and money, they could just work with someone in, in a country outside of the U.S. like Nigeria, for example, and pay one third less. And still the talent and engineer in that country would get paid way more than what the, the, the market in Nigeria would pay him. So it's a really win for both, both, both sides. And so that we have an understanding of what the rates are these days, what is like a top machine learning engineer, a US one getting paid these days? Yeah. So from the junior, like I just saw Sam Altman in top engineers get paid around $900,000 a year. The average market for a junior or some entry level engineer get paid from one twenty to one fifty thousand dollars, and it ranges from one fifty to three hundred, four hundred for the mid levels, and then it goes up to the nine hundreds, even millions and, and above. So that's prices in the United States. In uh, Africa, we're talking one third of all that, one third to half. So instead of one fifty, around fifty or fifty five, and you get the same quality. Yeah, it's amazing that we're seeing some numbers where they're getting paid nine hundred thousand a year. <laughs> Just it's crazy yeah, money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of money, man. Yeah. AI, uh, machine learning is a very strong skill set today. It's a very much in need because the R is really high, right? So it wouldn't make sense to spend all that money and don't get as much or more in return, right? So the company like OpenAI is, okay, I spend a million dollars, but I know that the tech, what will be produced by the engineer in one year or two, it just returns three, four times the money, at least not, not to mention like even 30 X. So yeah, the technology is very powerful and 
we're seeing now that the market adoption is coming into the early adopters. So 5% of the market are innovators and already adopted AI. Now it's like for the early movers and early adopters, that, that extra curve, the 30%, they're like, okay, now we want to develop this technology, especially this year, like ChatGPT early this year triggered 100, 200 million users in a couple of weeks who are talking about it. And then you have executive boards meetings saying, okay, how can we implement this? So this accelerated now companies like a couple of 10 dozens of million companies today is looking into how can we implement this? How can we reduce costs? How can we increase our ROI? And that's where solutions and platforms like ours really help these individuals because they very hard to start, right? So you really want to get a use case. Where do I start? Where's the best amount of data? Who do I need to hire? What expertise do I need? It's very difficult uh, questions to answer and we make it super easy. Yeah, so for those of you looking for your next career, you can make up to a million dollars a year becoming a machine learning engineer. So that might be the next career path for you to have a very lucrative monetary path ahead of you. So Mark, if our listeners wanted to learn about your platform and engage with that, how could they do so? Yeah, we just launched actually one of our new websites. It's called lyrise.ai, so L-Y-R-I-S-E dot A-I. And we could drop a link as well uh, for anyone who's interested either to join the network as a talent or a company, product manager, CTO, a technical lead, an AI lead who's struggling to hire, to find that expertise and wants to do it very fast, instant match, less than a week, the whole infrastructure for that. Just click on that link, sign up. And I'm sure, Chad, we can also offer them something attractive and something for your network as well. Definitely. We definitely can. Thank you, Mark, for coming on the show and for everybody for listening to another episode of Failing to Success. If you like the show, make sure to leave us a five-star review. I'm your host, Chad Kalecki, and we'll see you next time.